Hi everybody, welcome to Activity 5.3. Today we're going to talk about that third essential reading skill, and you'll finish up the third read-through of your article of the week. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to be working on this third highlighted goal. Students will be able to understand and state the big, main ideas of a text. But just to remind you that all three of these reading strategies are working toward the big goal that I have for you, which is that I want you to be able to thrive as a reader in whatever reading situation you find yourself in. So I hope that practicing these three basic reading skills will help you um, be able to do these things without even thinking about it when you get into a reading situation, and then that will help you be successful as a reader. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're talking about understanding the big ideas. To start out, let's play a little game. I'm going to show you a picture. Now take a look at that picture, and in the box to the right of this screen, go ahead and write what you think this is a picture of. Just make a guess. It's not for a grade. When you write your guess, press the blue button to continue. Okay, so you made your guess. Let me zoom this picture out a little bit so you have a little more information to work with. Now you see this picture. After you see a little bit bigger picture now, make another guess in the box to the right and then click the blue button to continue. All right, I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a zoomed out picture still. Ooh, now you see even more of the picture. Go ahead and make your final guess about what you think this is in the box to the right and then click the blue button. All right, so probably by now you've guessed what this is, but let me zoom out a couple more times. Here's one more, and then here's the final picture. Now I'm wondering, when you saw the very first picture, which was just sort of a green blob, did you guess it was a picture of a tree? Odds are you probably didn't. Now you might have guessed a leaf, and that was a good guess if you did, but you probably didn't say tree. But this whole time, what you were looking at actually was a picture of a tree. Now, <laughs> you might be wondering to yourself, like, why is Mr. Nielsen having us do this? What does this have to do with reading? Well, what I want you to see is that just like a tree is made up of a lot of little tiny pieces called leaves, an article or anything you read is made up of a lot of little tiny pieces called sentences or details. But when you zoom out from all those sentences and details, you should be able to see the big idea, the big main thing the author is trying to say. Good readers should be able to do that. Just like when you're looking at this picture of this tree, you should be able to step back and say, oh, this is a picture of a tree. Now here's the thing. People who struggle with understanding what they're reading, they stay zoomed in the whole time. And they are like, if they're looking at the picture, it'd be like they're saying, it's a leaf and 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 a leaf, but they could never tell you it's a tree. It's the same thing with reading. They'll say, well, there's this detail and this detail and this detail and this detail, but they could never zoom out and tell you what the main idea is. That's a, an important skill to be able to do though. So I wanna teach you a strategy today to hopefully help you be able to do that in your mind. Zoom out, you've read a whole article, what was the big idea? So let's talk about that strategy. Now, just like I taught you the CPR strategy for vocabulary, I have another acronym for you called WIN. And eighth graders who were with me last year, you remember this. This, each letter in this acronym reminds you of a step, a thinking step that I want you to do after you finish reading either an article or a section of an article to help you zoom out and look at the big picture, look for the main idea, okay? So let's just say you were reading an article about dogs and it gave you a whole bunch of different facts about dogs. It talked about how smart they were. It talked about how loyal they are. It talked about um, how long that dogs have been living with humans throughout history, all these facts about dogs. When you get to the very end of it and you're like, okay, I need to zoom out and look at the big picture now. What's the big idea of this article? Let's do the win strategy. So start with W. The W stands for ask yourself, who or what basically was this article about? The answer to this should be one word, typically. Almost always it'll be one word. And it should always be a noun. Now, if you're wondering what a noun is, um, you should remember this from previous grades, but a noun is a person or a place or a thing, sometimes an idea. But 
it should be a noun. In this case, I'll read through the whole article. I'm like, who or what is this about? It's about dogs. So I'm going to write down my W, dogs. Okay, now that I've gotten my W, I'm going to move on to I. And the I stands for, ask yourself this, what information did the article give about my W? So in this case, what information did it give about dogs? Now, you're only giving one sentence, right? So it gave a lot of information about dogs, but basically, what information? If you had to summarize it all. So in this case, you would be like, well, dogs make great pets. That's the information it's telling about dogs. So you put your W and your I together. Dogs make great pets, period. There's your sentence. That's the main idea of your article. Now that you have your sentence, your W and your I, go to the third step. And this is an important step, but you're not actually writing anything down when you do the N. The N is a checking step. The N reminds you to go back and look at your sentence and make sure that you used a small number of words. Because here's the temptation for a lot of people. You want to put too many details into your sentence. Maybe you wrote like dogs are very intelligent and dogs can do tricks and dogs have been living with humans a long time. And basically you're just putting every single detail from the article into your main idea statement. Again, that's sort of like a person looking at that picture of the tree and saying, it's a leaf and 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 a leaf. That's not what you're supposed to do, though. You're supposed to zoom out and just say, what is it? It's a tree. Well, in this case, what it's about, it's about dogs make great, make great pets. So again, that end step is reminding you, go back and make sure you used a small number of words. Double check and make sure you didn't put too much detail. Now, I, you don't have to count. But a good rule of thumb is somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 words. If you used more than that, you're probably writing way too many details into your main idea statement. So, W-I-N, who or what was it about? What information did it give? And use a small number of words. Let's practice that together. Aw, look at that cute panda bear. They're so cute. Okay, so let's just pretend this is a whole article. It's just one paragraph, but let's pretend this is an article and read it together. Giant pandas live in bamboo forests in China. The average giant panda eats about 30 pounds of bamboo each day. Unfortunately, forests are being cut down and the giant panda is losing habitat. In the past 25 years, the average panda habitat patch shrank by 25%. As a result, pandas are becoming endangered. Okay. So we read this paragraph, we have all these individual sentences, all these individual leaves, so to speak. Now we're going to zoom out and ask ourselves, okay, if we had to say in one sentence what this paragraph is basically telling us, what would we say? Now, before we do the win strategy together, just out of curiosity, I want you to um, answer what you think it is. So on the box to the right, you're going to see four different options, and I want you to choose which one of those you think is the best main idea statement. Then click the blue button to continue. Okay, so you made your guess, and hopefully it gave you a little feedback. But if whether you got the right answer or the, the wrong answer, I want to talk about how you would get to that right answer. Let's do the win strategy on this paragraph. So just a reminder, W stands for who or what, I stands for the information about it, N stands for go back and check to see if you used the right number of words. So let's do that about this. So let's start with W. Who or what was this paragraph about? Who was the main character, so to speak, of the paragraph? Well, hopefully, in your mind, you're already thinking, it's about pandas. So I'm going to write down my W. Now, in this case, I wrote giant pandas. I said that it should almost always be one word. But if it's like a compound noun like this, or maybe it's a person's name and it's their first and last name, then it's OK to use two words. But it shouldn't usually be more than that. Okay, so who or what was this about? Giant pandas. Now I'm going to do my I. What information about giant pandas? What was this saying about giant pandas? Uh, sometimes it's helpful when you're doing this step to think about, imagine someone just walked into the room and they say, hey, what was that? What's that, that article about? And you say, oh, it's about pandas. And they say, what about them? And then what would you answer first? You would say, uh, well, their, their habitat is going away. They're becoming endangered, right? 
That's what you would say. You wouldn't say, oh, it's about how much pan bamboo they eat each day. It is giving you that information, but that's not the main point of the paragraph, right? Okay, so the information here I would say is are losing their habitat. Maybe you could also add are becoming endangered. That's the main point of this paragraph, right? So I'm going to do the end step. I'm not adding anything with N. I'm just going back and looking at did I make my idea big enough? Did I leave out the details? So I'm just going to look. I used only six words. Giant pandas are losing their habitat. And that's the big idea of this, this paragraph. Um, I want you to notice, did I include in my main idea statement that pandas eat 30 pounds of bamboo each day? No, that's not part of the big idea. That's like one leaf, okay? Did I say that they're, um, they're, for, the forests are being cut down? Not really, that's still a leaf. Did I talk about how their habitat is shrunk by 25%? Nope. That's, all of those details are important, but they are making up the tree, which is the big idea, which is giant pandas are losing their habitat. Okay? Now, when you're doing a main idea statement, your wording might be a bit different than mine, and that's okay. It's not like there's one exactly right way to write a main idea statement. The main thing you should be looking at is, is it the big idea? Is it, or, or is it bringing in too many details? Okay, so right, what we're, we're going to do right now is go to the distance learning website and you can follow along with me. So at any point, if you need to, pause this video and then go into a new tab and do what I'm doing. We're going to go into the article of the week and we're going to just do part of the read through number three. Now, just to remind us of what the read through number three is, remember that we have this annotation guide that instructions for article of the week right here um, in our materials. So I'm going to click on it to open it up. And I'm just going to keep it here in a tab so I have my directions. We've already done read through number one. We've already done read through number two. Now we're on read through number three. It says summarize each section of the article. And then in yellow it tells how many summaries. So you're summarizing every section plus the entire article. And I'll show you what that means when we open up our article. And then down below it says use the win strategy and here's a reminder about the win strategy. So I'm just going to keep the instructions here open. I'll go back to the distance learning website and go into Google Classroom down here and into communications and into the classwork tab and I'm looking for the document called article of the week number one and I'm going to open it. So here's the article, when it comes to water, clean isn't everything. And you've already read through this article twice. One time, doing your reactions, your metacognition. Your second time, doing CPR on vocabulary words. And you can see that um, if you scroll through this, you can actually see that I've done that in mine as an example. Now we're going to do a third read through. We're going to read the article again, but as we finish each section of the article, we're going to stop and try and summarize that section with the win strategy. So let's do the, an example right now. You can follow along with me. So I'm just going to start with the first section of the article. The first section is from the beginning down until you get to the first heading. Now if you're wondering what a heading is, it's the bigger text that's bold. Those headings divide up the article. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the article and go down to the first heading and then stop. So this section is only two paragraphs long. Sometimes sections are longer, sometimes they're um, shorter. Okay, but let's read this together. Water has a secret life that goes beyond its birth in deep space, one molecule at a time, its quiet accumulation by the oceanful in the deep rock of Earth, and its role in bringing each bag of microwave popcorn to life. Water is so adaptable, so nimble, that as we humans have gotten more inventive and more demanding, water has come right along with us, becoming as crucial a tool in the digital era as it is to a farmer. Every modern electronic device, from the simplest desktop calculator to our iPhones and the computers that control our car engines and our medical diagnostic machines and the servers that run the internet, 
relies for its creation on water. But a kind of water so exotic that it exists nowhere on Earth except inside microchip factories. All right, I finished this section. Now I need to go zoom out and try and write what's the main idea of what we just read. There was a lot of detail. Talked about microwave popcorn, talked about iPhones, talked about microchip factories. What was this basically saying? So let's do W-I-N. Now the way that I'd like you to do this is just at the end of the section, just highlight that last word of the section and then add a comment about it. Okay, so again, to highlight, you move your mouse to the beginning of it, click and hold and highlight it. Now that it's highlighted, I can either click on the little um, box that pops up over here, or if you don't see that come up, you can, like I've showed you before, click insert and come down here to comment. All right, so I'm at the end of this section and right here I'm gonna do W-I-N. So you don't have to write the W-I-N in the same way that you did the CPR, just do it in your head. So let's just ask ourselves W. Who or what was the section about? Hopefully right away it's obvious to you. This whole section was talking about water. So I'm gonna write water. I have my W written down. It's about water. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next step. So W-I, I is my next step. I reminds me to ask myself, what is the idea or information about water? So water what? is this saying? Well, if I had to put it in my own words here, I would say it's saying that water is very simple yet very complex. So you can use it to water a plant, but you can also use it to make an iPhone. It, it does both things. It's, it's a very um, uh, diverse substance, I guess you might say. So I'm just trying to think about how to put that in my own words. Um, it's very adaptable. Um, water, how about water is very simple and very advanced all at the same time. Water is very simple and very advanced all at the same time. Yeah, good. Okay, now I'm going to do the end step. The end step is going to remind me to go back in and just double check to make sure that I'm not putting in too many details. I'm, I'm not using too many words. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I used twelve words. That's typically in the window of what's good. If you if you're getting over twenty, you're probably getting too many words. Okay. So. Um, I just want to double check. I didn't like, I didn't include microwave popcorn in here because that's a leaf. It's not part of the main idea. It's just trying to prove the point that water is used for so many things from the simplest to the most advanced task, right? So I've got it. Good. And I'm going to hit comment. And here's my main idea statement for the first section. Now, how many times do I have to do this? Let me go back to the instructions again. Ooh, that's right here. It says, I need to summarize every section of the article plus the entire article. Okay, so then this is what you're going to do now. I'm going to go to the next section, starting at this heading, and I'm going to read and read and read and read and read all the way down. This is a long section, all the way down to here. And now I see there's a new heading, so I'm going to stop and highlight this last word. You know, before you do this, you need to actually read it, okay? This is like six or seven paragraphs. And once you finished reading it, highlight water, hit the comment button right here, and you're gonna do the win strategy. You're gonna say, what do you think the who or, the, who or what was this section about? It might still be water, or it might be something else. It might be the IBM factory, okay? And then write the W, add the I and then double check to make sure you used a small number of words. All right, I'm gonna hit cancel for mine. And then after you do that, start in the next section and keep reading until you get down to candy. That's the end of this section. Highlight it, hit your comment button and write your main idea statement with win strategy. Then start the next section. Read, 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 read all the way down to make it.
okay? Add your comment to summarize that section. Then read the last section. Read, 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 read. Water is so clean, it's poisonous, all the way down to everything. And summarize that. Then you're done summarizing each individual section. But let's go back to the directions one more time. It says you need to summarize every section plus the entire article. Okay, so after you finish the last summary of the last section, here's what I want you to do. You're going to zoom out even more. You're going to zoom out, and I want you just to come up here to the title, and you can just highlight the whole title of the article and add a comment. And now what I want you to do, and this is the last step, is I want you to try to summarize the entire article in one sentence using the win strategy. So ask yourself, who or what was this about? This whole article about, and what was the main idea of this whole article? Okay, and put your comment. Do your best. Um, remember, this is sort of like a sports drill practice. You're trying to um, train your brain to do this kind of thinking. So. Uh, that is a strategy to help you hopefully zoom out and see the big idea of um, a piece of writing. All right, you guys, enjoy and thank you.